Welcome everybody. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, marketing in your business. Uh, predominantly, there is uh, obviously a few different ways to market depending on the business that you're in, who you market to, uh, and you know the products or services that you sell. Uh, predominantly for myself, we work in a service-based um, industry. Uh, being signage, we provide all different types of you know, signs and logos and things like that for all different types of businesses. So for us, marketing, um, it's multifaceted. Uh, it, you know, it's email, it's building lists, um, Google AdWords, uh, SEO, so organic search. Uh, it's a really big part of you know our business, um, and we we categorise them in into you know um, different clients that are at different levels of or different you know parts of the funnel. Um, some are looking to buy, ready to go. Some are not sure; they just want a bit more education around you know the product and services that we offer and what's available out there. So, depending on your business, probably some fundamentals are uh, who are you selling to. Um, that's a big part of you know any sort of just digging down and getting a bit more sort of macro on um, you know your ideal client, as they say, digging down on, on you know what your client does, where do they eat, where do they buy, you know their habits, their do's, their don'ts, you know their likes, their dislikes, etc. So um, digging down to your ideal client really helps focus your marketing as well, um, and then you're not casting the net so wide. Um, and look, to say that there's businesses out there that, you know, they, they, are, they are successful by casting the net wide. And what I mean by wide is that they're, you know, organically SEO wise, you know, they really, they really just throw it all out there. Yeah. Um, and same with AdWords as well. It's a bit more sort of narrow, a bit more focused there um, in regards to keywords. But um, I suppose it can bog the business down um, you know, dealing with, as we say, you know, tire kickers uh, and time wasters if they're not really sort of having that, you know, laser focus in regards to their marketing effort. So, again, uh, it comes down to you've got Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest is, a, um, is an avenue now, especially in graphic design, food, uh, signage, you know, things that are very, um, you know, picture focused, uh, you know, work well uh, on Pinterest. LinkedIn's another one. Again, LinkedIn is a, you know, it is sort of super focused. Um, you can really narrow down some good good leads there. Um, and it's a slow burn too, like especially with social media. Um, you can't forget that, you know, it's, it's what you do consistently that will add up over time. Okay, so people are potentially looking to buy, or they are, depending on which sort of level of the funnel they're at. Um, but you've always got to be, you know, top of mind. That's, that's my advice out there too. So whether you're posting regularly, pardon me, um, or just consistently doing something with social media um, on, on a weekly basis uh, as a minimum um, will help in the efforts. Um, and again, budget. Okay, it comes down to how much money you've got to, to put at your marketing and advertising. Um, Facebook, you know, might be a bit hit and miss. People have good results. Again, the reason they probably have a bit you know, a bit of a hit and miss sort of scenario and can be put off by different, um, you know, marketing efforts and campaigns is that, you know, sometimes you, you might have a small budget. You're going to start there. You might throw a bit of money here, throw a bit of money there. And you really don't see any, um, you know, return on investment. So you're probably better off saving maybe, you know, even if it's three months worth of advertising and putting it into a month, yeah, and really giving it a go. Um, and that could be through uh, AdWords or Facebook advertising. If, if, again, that's where your client or your, your customer sits. Um, and instead of just putting like a $20 a day budget on AdWords, put 100 yeah? And just focus that effort into a month because the result over that month will be a lot greater, gives you more data, yeah? It works quicker. So then obviously you can see and adjust and you know focus even more so on what's working and what's not. With these small budgets, again, yeah, very, very hit and miss. So uh, did anyone have any questions around you know marketing for their business? Well, I wanted to ask Luke, um, how much have you guys done in sort of figuring out the avatar of your client? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we have, uh, and we've, we've, you know, we've narrowed down quite considerably and we're doing that again now. So it's, you know, it's, it's an ongoing effort too. So we're starting to uh, focus uh, more so into our, yeah, our ideal client, our avatar. Um, so we can really direct our, our marketing and our message to that person. Um, and that's based on mm. you know, our, yeah, our ideal one is like a marketing manager at a multinational corporation. Um, you know, they're involved in different rollouts or many rollouts over the year. So it's ongoing business. Um, it's a high spend. Um, you know, we really focus in on that person uh, because not only do we work well together, nine times out of 10, we align pretty well together too. Uh, mm. And we really, we really love that kind of work as well, as well as it being, um, you know, mostly profitable. Yeah. Um, and with the campaigns that you've run on, um, Google AdWords or whatever you, what you, whatever you're doing mostly, are you guys um, measuring the results of what has been the most successful types of campaigns? Do you split test things like that? Do you repeat what worked well? Yep. Yeah. Another good question too. Um, we haven't done a lot of split testing. That's probably something that um, our web developers done um, for us and that might be one or two pages you know that might be slightly different in regards to um, you know the way we direct the message do we call it message to market so um, I don't personally you know there sort of comes a limit in my skill level I know enough in the business about a lot of things but you know only to a certain point that I need to know that it's being done well or not yeah so mm -hmm. with our words and SEO I do use a company um, you know, and we've had a long-term relationship. They're, they're good at what they do. Um, look, I'll be honest, it's like a mechanic, right? You take your car there. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's due for a service, but you take your car there. He does what he does. We don't know. Like, I mean, unless you open the bonnet and check, I mean, you're not really <laughs> going to know, are you? And Well, <clears throat> AdWords, SEO is like that. Um, it's an investment, yeah. It's not a cost to the business. Uh if you can, if you start your business today and you just, even if you engage uh, a one man band, like a startup company that's super keen, um, you know, they, they seem, you know, reasonable at what they do, you know, get onto it, get, get SEO going um, straight away. And I mean, that probably costs, you know, anything from, you know, I mean, there's guys out there charging a thousand to 5,000 a month, depending on the amount of sort of copying content that they're mm -hmm. doing. We utilize our web developers, our SEO company, purely for um, to see a spy on the competition, see where they're at, um, keep an eye on our rankings, yeah, just to see that we're, you know, we're sort of, because you, you, depending on the competition out there, you can be top of the page one day and then three, four days later, a week later, uh, once your competition start to come up, um, then you'll come down. So that, and it's that ebbs and flows, yeah. So it's like you never know what's mm. actually happening and nine times out of 10, if anyone has done SEO work, the only call you'll make is when you go, well, we're not on the top anymore. We're not in the top three. We're not on the, you know, page one, what's going on. So um, yeah. it's a real, yeah, it's a funny one with SEO. AdWords again, turn the tap on, tap off. It's super focused, um, but again, it's a bid, you know, um, you're going to pay a lot more uh, over time, uh, but you can really get sort of hyper-focused on those, those keywords. And then, your AdWords, your SEO, your Google business page, all this data, um, there's a few different systems uh, that we use in regards to a dashboard. We can actually see how it's all linked and like right down to like our email footers, you know, how many times people have clicked on, you know, our website link, you know, and the email footers, or even the quotes that we send out, um, Instagram's linked, uh, LinkedIn, it's all the social media platforms. So these dashboards nowadays are really, I mean, there's so much data there. Sometimes it boggles my mind. Um, but yeah, yeah work, working with a professional just to get the basic fundamentals down, and then building it from there, it's probably been you know the, the you know the, the best advice I've gotten um, getting into business. You know, sort of ten, fifteen years ago. Yeah, and Luke, um, what was I going to ask? It's gone. <laughs> <All right. laughs> was it? Um, was about something that you just mentioned, but um, are you oh, are you doing any remarketing campaigns at all? Yeah, we have we have in the past. Um, again, 
uh, our business has evolved. Uh, we had the net pretty cast pretty wide, um, mm. but we had good processes in place to pre-qualify clients. Um, you know, re really quickly information guides in PDF form with images and some basic prerequisites for us to, you know, um, move to the next stage. Um, and generally if, if clients sort of couldn't get past that, um, then we, we didn't do business. You know what I mean? Um, mm. There's people that are unorganized and, are very detail focused are really not our ideal client because it takes a lot of time to babysit them, nurse them through There's potential for errors because you know, people mm. aren't checking things at the other end. So we steer clear of it now, but we've really focused our marketing efforts um, based on that premise as well, that they are our ideal client. Um, yeah. But yeah, remarketing for me, it kind of annoys me. Um, it does work. Um, but again, I, th I think it's uh, more suited to a, um, uh, sort of a high turnover, you know, maybe a fast moving consumer good type product yeah. rather than uh, like, I think remarketing works fantastic. And for those who don't understand what remarketing is, it's when you go to um, the car rental site, they're the perfect example. They'll always do it. And you don't uh, book a car or you don't check out, you don't purchase something and the next thing you know, you're getting ads offering you 20% off or you might get an email offering you 20% off or something like that yeah. um, because they, they know who you are um, or you, you go to a website and then all of a sudden you start seeing an ad for that product on Facebook and you're like, hey, that's really strange. I just started yeah. looking at that and it's like, no, it's not strange. <laughs> that's, no. that's remarketing. In fact, you'll actually see remarketing happening on even Facebook Marketplace now. So yeah. um, I, I've had some very freaky little things recently. I don't know whether it's been voice recognition or photographs or what, but I was talking to friends about indoor plants and yep. I took a couple of photos of the indoor plants. And um, the next thing you know, that appeared on my Facebook marketplace. And yep. then um, I was talking to my mother-in-law about vintage teacups and yep. how people would sell them for high teas. And the next thing you know, they appeared on my Facebook marketplace too. So, yeah, and that, that's a form. That's what's a different, going on out yeah. there? <laughs> well, it's a different form of remarketing as well. And they're very, I mean, the amount of data that we, you know, freely give up um, when we buy, you know, a Pixel or, a, or an Apple mm. uh, product um, is, is astonishing. And so they, they start to use that, not, a, I shouldn't say against us, but some will say against us. Um, mm. to our own detriment. And you're right. So you'll go and look for a laptop or an iPad online and you're just searching around to see who's got a good price, good deal. And then you'll just be on a, you know, a different website, you know, looking at gardening. And then uh, you'll start to see that those computers will pop up again. You yeah. know, as, as, as you trawl around the net, um, they will follow you. And that is, yeah, that is remarketing um, yeah. In, yeah. in its essence. But I think, yeah, you're right. It's, it's almost just to prompt people to say, hey, don't forget about the product you looked at, but you didn't buy um, so yeah, remarketing is another one. It's not a huge cost either. Remarketing like budgets you know, range, you know, from tens to hundreds of dollars. Like they're not a lot, um, mm. but they have mixed results. So yeah, definitely again, just check what you're selling is going to depend on the best, um, you know, medium or, or, or avenue to, mm. to go with your marketing and, and don't forget, um, you know, picking up the, like to sell something in this day and age, Let's, you know, let's really break it down. Um, everyone's sending emails, yeah? Just like mm. blanket marketing emails. It's about establishing relationships. So we can't really sit behind our computer um, and the other different platforms and expect to generate sales, yeah? Depending on, and again, depending on what, you in, what you're in, our business is very much about relationships. Um, we don't churn and burn, you know, those ongoing valuable relationships are really... Um, really important to us. And also they're very profitable um, over the long term. Um, and the acquisition, you know, starts to sort of diminish when we're looking at higher quality clients. So the cost of acquisition of getting one of those, you know, big clients and nurturing them over time, um, you know, it's really compared to like throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars at, you know, AdWords and, mm. and um, SEO. There's a big difference there. So, and personally for us, it is picking up the phone um, you know, making calls, establishing those relationships. That's a, that old 
old school, you know, don't be afraid to, to talk to someone um, and mm. nine times out of 10. You know, that's what people aren't doing in sales at the moment is, is actually calling people. People go, well, you know, people are busy. They don't want to be, you know, called. And it's like, well, yeah, but someone has to do it, right? Someone has to interrupt their day to, to get the sale, to nurture the relationship. And I guarantee you, people do like to have a bit of a chat, especially if you've got, you know, you've got some sort of warm connection there mm. um, to start with. People, that's, people enjoy that. It's probably, it's probably, you know, an anomaly. It's done less and less these days and yeah. um, email, you know, marketing and all the other forms of advertising are really sort of hiding behind that, um, getting that real relationship-based sales going. So what would you say has been your biggest um, successful type of marketing so far? Um, it's, it's multifaceted, yeah, so it's across the board. It, um, I would say definitely, definitely SEO, uh, AdWords, um, we can turn the tap on. Again, so these things are happening, you know, they coincide with each other. And I really don't think if I had one, one without the other, we may have had mixed results, but I think um, LinkedIn's a good one for us too. Again, we're always top of mind, so we're always posting. Um, yeah. I, we use Buffer, so it's a platform that you can upload sort of one or two images, some text, some hashtags, and you can spit it out to uh, your LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, there's a, uh, Twitter as well, uh, in one go, which is fantastic. And you can jump in the back end and you can sort of preload posts for, yeah. you know, a couple of days apart. So very smart, very quick, very easy, yeah? So like you're sitting on the train, in between meetings, couple of photos, bit of text, bang. It's got to happen weekly, yeah? So that's yeah. on top of your SEO. Put a budget together. It's a thousand bucks a month, yeah? So if your business turning over, say, maybe a hundred to 500,000 uh, a year, yeah, top line sales, um, you should be dumping at least a thousand bucks a month with an up and coming SEO company that's switched on. So they're not going to be at the top of the range in regards to what you're paying. Um, and then you can, you can grow with them. You can move on and work with others. That that's a no brainer. It's like having an ad uh, you know, 20 years ago on the yellow pages you <laughs> kind of really didn't get work unless you, you had an ad in there and there's different forms of that. So, um, SEO, <coughs> excuse me, is, is very good, but your own SEO too. So you can write your own uh, blog posts, upload your own photos. Um, and then you can sort of potentially have a look at AdWords again, just get some good advice from somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, and that'll come down to budget, uh, business Google page, uh, your business page is that's coming leaps and bounds. Now, when I, excuse me, <clears throat> when I first discovered it, um, it was more just linked to your maps. Had a few little bit of info you could put in there, maybe a logo, yeah. some images, but now it's really, um, they're looking to sort of really take it to the next level. So your Google business page, if you have no money at all, that's where you focus your efforts. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? If you're going to do anything at all, yeah, it's there. Yeah. And it's Are you putting evolve. out offers on yours? Um, with us, because it's so we do a lot of custom stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We may we may have introductory offers, but uh, we're more about sort of showcasing our work and learning more. So putting links, um, yeah. you know, that people can click through the website, which I never had. Like I think even two three years ago, you couldn't do that um, with the Google Business Profile. And I think it's really going next level. Like we've got videos, and it, it just keeps evolving. Um, yeah. get on top of that, you know, and then, you know, they've even got, you can copy and paste, um, you know, a Google review link um, that you can now put in your emails. I don't know why they didn't have that like 10 years ago. We, yeah. we, we've manually done it for years. Um, that's a big one. Um, getting, you know, honest reviews and just put it in your canned responses. If you're in G Suite, Gmail, set up a canned response. Uh, we do it. Example is, hey, Gary, um, you know, just a little... Thank you for your business. I uh, just want to say the photos I've saw and, you know, have seen of the project look fantastic. Um, you know, whilst I have you, you know, would you mind leaving an honest review, um, you know, on our Google business page, you know, to obviously enhance our, our you know, online presence. And in saying that, think about where your clients go to because some, you know, may not feel comfortable. They don't have a Gmail account or a profile. Mm. Put, in an, put in another one, whether it's... Um, could be Facebook reviews, uh, LinkedIn's another one. Um, so just yep. just give them options. So maybe two or three. Yeah. And that should be set up in the back end, just as like you know maybe a week after a job that's gone really well. You know, give them a call as well. We do that. Bit of love. Yeah. Fire off that email and then.
think we just lost you, Luke. You know, very professional, like top end. Um, and then they said, well, then, you know, in the reviews as well, like you've got like 57 five-star reviews and they're really good, genuine ones. They're not like my cousin, Mike, or someone, you know, like my auntie, you know, things like that. That's, you know, they're, they're real genuine um, reviews. And we really, that, I think that just adds trust, adds weight to the brand. Um, and if they had no differentiator then and you know our competition have got no stars and we've got 57 well you don't mind paying a bit more um you know to get the job done because you know you know they've got a bit of history and track record so now all that's free you know on your google um I think we just lost you there for a second, Luke. Um, I was just going to mention about, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, about, I just discovered with a client the other day, uh, a whole bunch of different directory listing sites um, where you can get leads. So yep. he's a, a builder and um, I suggested he hop on high pages. So we registered him for high pages. And then I found another one called one flare and yep. um, one flare has a whole bunch of different categories, but he was, he was getting leads within the first few days and he's already responded to something like 10 leads in the first week and he can't believe it. It's like, yeah. And, and you only pay, um, you know, a certain amount per lead Yep. And um, you don't have to pay a subscription fee. So he's wrapped. We've just found this other little um, system to lock into to, to just to bring in other leads for building, you know, smaller building jobs, bigger mm -hmm. building jobs, whatever it is. Yep. Um, but it's worth um, going, and have a look in, going and have a look at these different directory sites and, yep. and registering your business on them, uh, especially for... Uh, trades and people like that um, uh, because yeah we, uh, he, we can't believe the results we're getting through this already just in the first couple of weeks it's amazing yeah nice and that that's a good point that's probably one thing I, I didn't touch on but um, all those yeah, high pages and things like that um, and they're, they're sort of secondary to Google so they, they always rank you know, uh, sort of second or third, they're always thereabouts. Similar yeah. to Yelp, I think Yelp's probably a bit bigger in the States, um, but they start to sort of pull their own community. So it isn't, you're right, it isn't just Google. Um, and it's simple and easy to just put your information up there um, and, all that, and all that helps. And as well, um, a good SEO company, um, the first thing they'll do is just see you don't have multiple listings or duplicates. Make sure your information's up to date on all of these, you know, on your Google business, uh, Yelp, whatever the high pages, just go through it, white pages even. Mm. I think there's about 10. Um, we did it a few years back just to clean up everything. And once it's consistent, you know, the quality of your profile and who you are, even your website and everything, um, your quality score really, you know, it can go up. Mm. And when people are searching for you, these just add, add weight to, you know, your brand as well. So, but again, they've probably reverse engineered it. You only pay for those leads, but again, it's hard to see what's qualified. You know, sometimes I think it's great to get a call and I can quickly see without having to sort of pay for it each time. Although I am paying it for some way, shape or form, I can really get, get, get through these leads quicker and get to our ideal client um, and our profitable jobs uh, faster. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and more precise so yeah there's definitely there's a lot out there that's for sure yeah and have you guys just on one final note ventured into the area of like uh referrals referral marketing and things like that like referral partnerships or anything like that yeah somewhat like for us it's uh we we do a lot of white label work for designers and marketing agencies uh, mm -hmm. because we, we're finding there's a bit of a trend now that um you know most consumers uh, depending on what industry you're in want that sort of full service company now so there's companies that weren't in our sort of area that are sort of getting into it because there's been a bit of a requirement you know clients don't want to 
have to buy a door and then go and see a door guy and then a lock, you know, like a door knob guy and then a lock guy, you know, they just want to <laughs> door, you know, and that, that's really what they're after. Yeah. Um, so we're, we, we have found that, um, yeah, definitely referrals are a big, big part of any business. Um, yeah. And be clear who you are as a business too. Yeah. Like making sure that people understand what you do, how you operate is going to determine, um, you know, those referrals as well, because I, we've got referrals in the past and even personally, but they're not qualified. You know what I mean? And I thought, well, that's odd. Like I, and, and you, you'll just, sometimes you'll do a job or you'll do it, you know, the project for a client you know, and you're like, well, because it was a referral or a family or a friend, you know, that sort of put you that way and it hasn't always panned out that well. So mm -hmm. I think um, that's a little tip too. It's just being absolutely clear on uh, even the people that you deal with that will give you referrals um, is how you operate. Because I've, I've had to decline. I say, look, we, we, we don't do that kind of work, but however I could suggest, you know, um, to go and see somebody else. So have that up your sleeve because you don't want to be doing jobs that you don't want to do. Um, yeah. Could, could, you know, end up going pear-shaped and for what? Because you weren't, you know, prepared to have a conversation up front. So referrals, just be clear on what you do and how you do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fabulous. So I can imagine... Um, you know, it's brand agencies and marketing agencies definitely being good referral partners yeah. to you guys. So just yep. because people are coming to them for branding and, um, you know, maybe shop fitters and all sorts of people like that. They're just, yeah. um, they're, they're, they're doing one part of the thing. And, you know, quite often people have signage inside of their shops as well as outside of their shops and everything now, you know, like funky neon things and all these kinds of things. So yeah. Yeah, there's, you could see that once you really start thinking about who all your referral partners are and who's in that sort of zone, um, yep. the, the options really open up when you start thinking about it. And they do, yeah. And it comes at that point where it's important that, you know, you, you do a good job um, for those, you know, referral partners and um, you establish and, and grow those relationships because they're probably, you know, they can be some of the hardest ones to sort of to nab as well to really sort of, get um you know create those relationships um but if you've you've get given an opportunity do a good job uh, be honest and um you know it should all all pan out pretty well um yeah it's definitely a great way to to open up uh, your business i mean there's companies out there that have their fingers in more pies than you could ever imagine yeah um and all you need is just a little piece of that pie each time you know mm -hmm. they're in a bigger pie um and they can really sort of uh, open that up and, and same with connections with like well, us like marketing manager or, or you know, purchasing officers in companies um, you know they, they change companies you know we're, we're, dealt, we're working with people that um, have actually we met at an initial company we did work for then they moved and said hey look I'm over here now but you know we, we need can you come and have a look at this so uh, then you start to establish those relationships with people that go to different businesses so um, and that's where sort of LinkedIn to always stay, you know, in contact with people. Uh, mm -hmm. First thing I do with a good lead. So once we've established a bit of a, a history, um, we've done one or two jobs together, even the first one. And I think, yeah, this is a good one. I'll jump on LinkedIn. I'll make a connect with them. Um, and then again, we're posting regularly. So then we're educating them about what we do or the product and services that we sell because they're, they're new. Yeah. Um, and so even two years time and they leave and go to another job, you're still a connection um, and you're still top of mind. So you, you just, it's just all those little things you're slowly building. Yeah. But, and it's, it's very yeah. important to stay connected on LinkedIn because um, you might have their email address for their old company and they've moved and all of a sudden yeah. that email doesn't work anymore. So you can at least connect with them on LinkedIn and just say, Hey, your email's bouncing. What's your new one? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And just saw, Hey, I can see you over here now. And, um, because you know things move pretty quickly, so um, mm. yeah, very important. So just narrow down a you know, narrow down a, pla a basic plan of um, you know how you want to sort of market uh, your product or services, and just keep it simple. You know, uh, mm. and and you know if you don't have a lot of money, start with the things that are free: Google business listings, high mm. pages. Just you know, start there, and then work your way you know um, towards other things. And and you know, I think that you'll have a better chance of success rather than just sort of borrowing $20,000 and putting it in, into Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's good to think of, um, you know, big picture deals. So like um, 
you know, you might be, I'm not saying that you are, but you might be thinking, okay, where are we going to get our next sign job from our next sign job and next, you know, a single sign, a single sign, a single sign. Yeah. When I, when I worked in a company, I put out a, um, a tender for signage for the four and a half thousand members that we had. So one yeah. sign company got the deal to do yeah. all the signs for four and a half thousand members that wanted them. And yeah, you know, they probably would have never dreamed that that kind of deal would come in, but it's, uh, it's amazing if you just start putting it out there and thinking, okay, what kind of opportunities could there be out there to score a deal like that, you know, and um, yeah. really, really thinking on big scale beyond single jobs. What are the types of companies that could bring in um, massive amounts of, of work for me, basically? Yeah. And yeah, and repeat work as well. So mm. um, it's got to be of a high quality, and and also it's got to be money to be made, you know, in it as well. I know in our game, there's some, you know, tenders do go out, um, but some of the, you know, the prices that people are willing to do these jobs for are, are not viable for us. Mm. Um, so in some, you know, way, shape, or form, um, you've got to assess that. You know, those one-offs are great if there's good money in it. So just remember to have a look at the, you know, the margins and factor in a little bit of error, especially with biggest projects, because, you know, once, once there's a lot of moving parts, um, that's where you can sort of, you know, miss, miss things. And that comes at a cost uh, in projects. So, um, that, that is great. And even as you said, capitalize on that. Like if there's a company that's willing to, you know, purchase four, four and a half thousand signs, well, you know, is that every year, is that every three years, you know, how can we establish an ongoing relationship? Cause that's where the cream's made. Once you've sort of you've done it, and so they're really yeah, really great ideas there too. Yeah, really, you know, there's no limit, really, is there? No, no, and just just by making some of the right relationships, you just you just don't know um, where that where that could lead. So in that in that instance, we didn't need any signage for our own business. We just yep. needed it for all the businesses that were members of ours. So yeah, <laughs> you just you just don't know. No, that's right. Yeah. So, um, so hopefully that's some of this, is, you know, is, is helpful to, to people out there. Um, again, basic plan, um, know who you are, what you do as a business and the product you sell and who you're selling to. Um, mm. yeah, and keep, keep it simple because there's so much information around us too that, you know, you should go over here and everyone's got an opinion, you know, really just sort of dig down, have a think about you know, what you think about it um, and get some advice. Um, We've all been in this sort of position before. I've, I've spent far too much money on one sort of platform and I've learned a lot from, you know, different mistakes. So I'm always here to help and offer some advice, you know, based on my expertise. And I know people in, in the group as well have had, um, you know, many different uh, experiences in marketing. So not just me. So, yeah, it's, a, it's great, great sort of wealth of uh, knowledge and, and community. Fantastic, Luke. Thank you for your um words of wisdom tonight and it's um it's always great to hear some examples from you know a different type of business it's not just someone working on their own or a um you know a service-based provider or something like that you know you're actually a um a bricks and mortar business um yeah. with staff you're essentially you know a, a manufacturer so it's, um, it's really good to have some great examples and um, just figure out ways that you can transfer that to, to your own business, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, well said. Yeah. No, I really appreciate um, everyone watching, listening, wherever you are. And yeah, as I said, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, we're always here to help and yeah, it will be our pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Luke. And um everyone in the all for one, one for all group and the community. Well, we're Luke and great support, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks, Alistair. Thank you. Yeah, Luke, that was really good. It's, it's really clear that, uh, that you've had lots of hands-on experience working with, uh, with your own marketing and the, you know, and obviously how that lends to other businesses as well. You know, myself coming from marketing, it's, it's really easy to see that what you're sharing with everybody today was really valuable. So, Thanks a lot for, uh, for taking the time to do that. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Great. Yep. Thank you, guys. All right. I'm uh, going to stop the recording. Cool.